Okay guys, welcome back to the vlog. I'm just on the train. Uh, it's a big one today. So this is the interview with Steve's POB. Um, as you guys know, he's a DDE fan. So Daily Driven Exotics regular. So this is a huge one. The greatest guy on earth. He can speak Japanese. He learned Japanese. Um, he's huge in Japan. Has a great car collection. He's got a Ferrari 458 wide body. Totally unique, insane wrap beautiful he's got the um original skyline 1970 gtr before the designation of the r series um so i just wanted to give you guys a quick intro to let you know a little bit about him this is a huge day huge day for the vlog uh for now please check out this vlog this interview with steve's pov please smash the subscribe button the like button and please share this video let's grow this channel um and please support Steve's POV. I'll put a link to his, uh, his channel in the description and his Instagram. Okay, guys, enjoy the vlog. Peace. Hello there. Hey, man, how you doing? Can you hear me? Yeah, how you doing? You yeah. How you doing? Yeah. It's finally nice to meet you in person, my friend. Nice to meet you too, man. Nice to meet you too. You're finally. Yeah, I know, right? How long it's been like pretty much since I started, so about a year now, because you're like originally one of my first supporters, so wow. yeah, it's been a year now. It looks sunny there in California. It's always sunny, it's warm, it's, uh, oh. it's usually pretty nice, probably a little different than where you're at right now. Yeah, we just got pounded with snow, so I'm looking at oh. about a, like a foot of snow right now, so ouch, yeah, ouch. and then ouch. we, yeah, it's crazy, like overnight, like Yesterday it melted, yep. the original snow melted, and then I was like, oh great, nice and clear for the auto show, I can get around. Yeah. Woke up this morning and it was, yeah, a foot of snow, so. <laughs> ouch, ouch. Yeah. Well, no problem, man, I'm, glad to, I'm happy to support you, and I thank you for your support of, of me and my channel too. It's, it's always nice of you, and, and you know, I, I hope you continue to grow, and congratulations on getting to the 300 and I see oh. Instagram growing a bit too. It looks like you're getting to 500 or so on Instagram soon. Yeah, I just reached 433 last night. I know, it's like, I, I just, I, I'm still in shock because when I first started, like I don't wanna keep going on about me, but just like all, even my friends and everybody were like, no, you're not gonna be able to do it. Like you're on crutches, you're disabled. Like there's no way. And I'm just like, no, I'm going ahead. I'm doing it. I bought my camera. This is my main vlogging camera here. Yeah. Don't let them, don't let the people, I talked about that in the motivation videos, right? I mean, yeah. Those people, if you're going to just listen to everybody, they're just going to, like I said, people are going to hold you back, man. You've got to, you've got to get out there and meet people. I mean, you may be disabled, but you're, 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 you're capable of doing a lot, hell of a lot of stuff. And Obviously, you're proving that. So yeah. yeah, man, do what you like. Get out there and do it. Don't let none, no, none of those people, you know, hold you back. Let them motivate you to get out there and do more. Exactly. That's what I did. Is I just I took that negativity and like just ran with it. I'm like, cause now like just some of the opportunities like filming that Ferrari collection. Yeah. Like never. I just went to go film a Pagani. And yeah. like, just like out of the blue, got taken to that collection, like out of nowhere. And it was insane. Yeah, let me tell you something, as you, as you may know, over life, sometimes some of these things happen for some reason. So maybe there was a reason you went there. Maybe there's a reason why yeah. that opportunity came there. And obviously it's a good thing. It, hap it happened, oh. you know. I know things happen not for reasons. I mean, you becoming disabled, you know, God knows that you can go back and change that. But oh. you know what? You're not letting it drag you down man you're, you're making the most of it and you're creating opportunities and you're positive and that that's awesome I, I think oh yeah like I I sitting in the hospital like just feeling like I had no like purpose and hope and like but I but look at the smile on my face like I I, I would have never guessed I would have kept my smile like I had to give up surfing and skateboarding and like like I loved my job as a high rise window washer. It was like the best job on earth. Right. And like you said, in three seconds, like my life changed, uh, I fell four stories. So like, just like in an instant. Yeah. And then like, and the worst part was my mom saw it on the news out West cause she's in Vancouver. Yeah. And so she flew red eye that night and 
just like that whole experience, it, it's, it was detrimental, but I look at it like a happy accident because like starting a youth and I was watching DDE and that's where I originally saw you guys was in the hospital. Cause what else is there to do, but watch you guys eight hours straight, like sitting in a, you know what I mean? So, and bought my camera gear and like, and now I have purpose in life again and I'm filming things like I've never seen in my, you know what I mean? And meeting guys like you, like, that's awesome, man. It's, I would never, yeah. It's terrific that you decided to turn it that way positive and make it a purpose. And you know, I, that that's motivating for, for me and I'm sure for other people, I'm sure for Damon and Dave too. And they hear stories like that. I mean, yeah. it's, it's good, man, because people get themselves down and get themselves stuck in, 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 in these ruts for, stuff a hell of a lot less than you've been through so oh, yeah. uh, you're a, you're an inspirational story to be able to be doing what you're doing so that means like the world to me thank you for saying like that it just yeah cuz like and it was funny because um my accident was July 4th 2017 and literally 2 years to the day I met Dave and Damon at a car meet like on the anniversary of my accident like was that at that huge, was that at that huge uh, meet? Yeah, the Toronto one where everybody's like, Dee Dee. Yeah, that was there. So if you, you look. Were in that. I remember, right, I think I seen, I remember seeing a picture of you in that with them. And yeah. You see, man, again, I, why that day? Why did that happen? Why, why on that same exact anniversary day of, of something terrible happened to you? Did something, you know, terrific happen for you? I know, right? Like, after, like being motivated by see i don't think people understand the the significance of that picture because like being motivated by the e and you guys and and to start a channel and then two years later after starting to decide a channel i meet them and like meet my and i know they come here every year but i just never thought i would have ever got to see them or meet them and like dude it was a big yeah i was nervous but I gave them like um, hard to find Hot Wheels and they were fighting yeah. over them and stuff. It was, a, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So that was a huge moment. Yeah, that meet was insane. Like thousands of people. I've never seen yeah. anything like it. Yeah. And then like. So whatever questions you've got, I'm, I'm here for you. Tell me what you'd like to do and uh, um, I'm happy again to support you. Yeah. So. Thank you for that, by the way. And thank you for doing this. Um, I just like. We're just the, we'll keep it light car guy stuff. Like, uh, how did you start your collection? Like what made you decide to learn? What I really want to know is what made you decide to learn Japanese? Because coming from Vancouver, uh, has a very large contingency of Japanese people. Yep. And so like one of my best friends, Katsunari was Japanese. And so I grew up immersed in that culture. And like uh, growing up, like watching anime, like Akira has always been my favorite movie, bar none. Get, uh, hunt, uh, Gundam Hades Project. So like, but just like I know the significance of that to learn Japanese is unreal. Like it's like they say you never stop learning because it's such a complex language to learn. So I just. We'll start off with that. Basically, what what made you decide to learn? I know you spoke about it before on your channel, but just for my for my viewers who are new of for course, you. Of course. So, I mean, it, this could become a very long story, so I'm going to try to abbreviate it yep. down for you to a shorter degree. But I'm also an East Coast guy like you. I'm from I'm from New Jersey. I, I, oh. I was born in the Bronx in New York, and I grew up in New Jersey. Whoa, so, that's crazy. I'm an East Coast guy like you, and I'm used to some cold winters and stuff. And then <laughs> I went to Wisconsin where I went to school. Okay. And that's even colder, as you yeah, know, yeah, oh yeah. Jersey was, um, but um, you know, until that point, I was in the muscle cars. I was in, you know, I was all American boy. I was, you know, I was uh, Camaros and Mustangs and hot rods and chop tops and Murphs oh. and and you know that was what I was into, man. It's been, right. I was the stuff like that, trucks, um, old Ford, you know, whatever. But then I got to Wisconsin and I I, I was a business major. And back then, I'm, I'm 49 now, and back back in that days, we're talking about 1988, Japan's economy was really, really booming at that time. Oh, yeah, yeah. Really doing great. And I was a business major, and in American business schools, or at least in Wisconsin at that time, they started teaching about how Japan, this little country, was doing all these things to, to become possibly the world's number one economy at that time. Right. And it was fascinating, it was interesting, and I, I decided I wanted to learn more, and I started studying a little bit about the culture and some politics and some 
other stuff. And eventually I decided, I met some Japanese exchange students, gave myself an opportunity to go to um, Japan where, uh, during the summer. And they lived, uh, they were the sons of uh, the owner of a big chicken farm. Oh, wow. Japan, outside of Tokyo quite a ways. And uh, I went there and I stayed there for three months and I really learned, you know, I, I right. immersed myself there. Um, really focused that summer on learning. I came back, I, I really felt confident in Japanese class again wow. after that. And um, I went out and I won a, a national uh, Japanese speech language contest in 1993. Wow. Uh, speaking about my experience on the chicken farm. And it was a funny story and everybody kind of laughed. I right. won a national, and that got me open doors for me in Japan after that with job opportunities and other stuff. But see, the funny thing is, the typical route into learning Japanese is exactly what you were starting to ask me during your question before. Right. You started rattling off animation and other stuff. Well, honestly, I don't even know what you're talking about. You, oh, you, okay. <laughs> I have no clue what you're talking about. I have, I had, I, I really have, had, had no interest in animation. Right, right. Or manga back then, and I'm not knocking it. I think it's great, but a lot of people who are in the Japanese culture wind up going into Japanese yeah. culture exactly the way you had mentioned right there. For me, it was a completely different. Uh, way into learning Japanese, and you did make a point too. Every day is learning. It's not like it's, it's you know a lot of people ask me how long do you think you can learn Japanese, and I said well I'm still learning yeah. all the time. I, I'm learning when I go to Japan. I'm still learning when I'm watch TV. I'm learning when I'm thinking about new words. I'm reading comments from the Japanese fans in Japanese or replying to them. I'm learning. Right. So you're never done learning. You know you're always always learning. Uh, it, no matter what it is, I think so. My um, friend Katsunari would, sorry to interrupt, I just, but my friend Katsunari would always say, like, you learn into your, your 90s and you're, like, you never, it's so complex and so diverse yeah. of a language, right? So, sorry, I interrupted. Anything, man, listen, I mean, you're learning, you know, your life situation now, you, you have to learn some stuff too, right now. Oh. You, you think that you took for granted until, until July 4th in 2017, right? I mean... It, it boggles, and I don't mean to tie it to something as traumatic as that. No, no. But you know, you we're gonna if we stop learning, I think we're we're done. You know? Yeah, yeah. If you lose your drive to learn something new, so it's not just about Japanese or English or whatever it may be. If you, I mean, if you're a poet, right? I mean, you probably want to keep writing poetry as long as your brain is functioning to do it. Right. You know, able to do it. So for me, for language. You know, I listen to Japanese music, I listen to Japanese, so I go to the gym and I work out listening to Japanese music. That's and, sweet. And it's always running through my head and trying to keep my pronunciation in tip-top shape. And in some ways, it's like being an athlete, but, you know, right. far from an athlete. But I mean, with, um, yeah, like what you're saying, yeah, like um, learning to like, like especially with like, I was supposed to be in the wheelchair for life, but like I was like, no way. Like, I met people in the hospital, not to keep going back to it as well, but I met people in the hospital that were complacent with being in a wheelchair when they had the chance to get out of it. When I see someone learning Japanese, and that's what one of the motivators in the hospital is watching you is like, wow, like this guy, like, um, learn Japanese, like, it's one of the hardest things. I'm like, I'm not going to sit here and feel sorry for myself. I'm going to, like, get up. I'm going to get out of this wheelchair. I'm going to, like start a YouTube channel because I love cars and like, and awesome. yeah, and it's, it, it, you're right. It's been a stepping stone. Like, like all my families in like they're 2,400 vertical feet up a mountain. So like when you drove, um, up to Kelowna, so I used to live in Kelowna, by the way, sorry, I forgot. I should have meant. Yeah. So I lived there for three years and then moved uh, to Toronto from there. Right. But, um, so when you drove up, you went through a little area, on the Coquihalla where the snow, do you remember the snow shed where you go through that yeah. long tunnel? My mom's oh, yeah. in the town just before there. So she lives uh, up a mountain and like, so all my family's out West and like t to learn how to like get groceries again. Like it just, the, it's the little small things in life that people take for granted. Like I would love to get back. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. so, yeah. um, but, but that's why I love your channel. It's so it just like, it's such a like motivator and inspiration and same with Damon and Dave. Like there's such to hear Damon's story, like dropping out of school, like young and like, but then like developing this like huge thing and the, the, the and like, so, I mean, I'm not looking to be as big as uh, Damon or Dave, but I'm, I want to, like, I love cars. I want to turn this into my career. Like, I don't want to sit around and just like 
watch YouTube all day. I don't want to like do that. And like, so it, like, and when I first got that, uh, notification, like you were following me, like it literally, I was almost like, I could not believe it. Like it was such a uh, crazy thing. So thank you so Peace much for that. And my advice is, you know what I mean? Just, you do what you like, be consistent, do it as best as you can. You know what? Um, if it's meant to be, it's gonna it's gonna come along and and and, and it's gonna head in a good direction for you, man. Right. If you, but if you want it too bad, if you're always thinking, my God, how do I get? I gotta do this and that. I mean, you got you know set set little goals like yeah. you're doing. You know what I mean? Five hundred. You know, and work to six hundred. You know, let's get the let's get the you know next time let's get the four hundred right and right. five hundred and make them obtainable goals and and doing. Listen, man, you have a unique story to tell. I mean, you're out there shooting cars and everything else. And I think, you know, there's a lot of people who go out and shoot cars. You happen to be catching a lot of good ones and oh. doing a lot of stuff, but you have, you have more of a unique story to tell. And, right. you know, the, something that was tragic in your life that you turned around and you've now made this stuff, dude. I, I mean, you have the ability to, to spread a message to other people and motivate other people like that lady in that chair yeah. who's still driving around in that scooter. Maybe she turns on YouTube one day and says, hey, I remember that dude. He was in the hospital right next to me. Damn, he couldn't do shit at that time. Now look at him. He's up. He's out there. He's getting stuff. He started a YouTube channel. Holy crap. He's got He's got how many subscribers now? You yeah. know what I mean? Maybe you become an inspiration That's for my... people who Sorry. are saying, God, you know, my life's over because of what happened to me. And, and you're saying, hell no, it's not. It's just just getting started. We're going to you know, I'm gonna do that. I I think you have a deeper message to give in your channel than just out there shooting McLarens and Lambos and all yeah. those other supercars, which are great, but there's more of a message behind it, man. Thank you so much. Like, that was one of my main goals. So I find that most people with channels that are, like, about them, where it's, like, me, 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 I, 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 all the time, don't make it. And it's when you have, when you want to inspire somebody. So I want to inspire people, like you said, to to do greatness and like show other uh, people in my situation that are like either disabled from life or from an accident that, yeah, you can go on, you can move on. Like I never thought like one of my biggest moments so far is filming the, the, um, the law for the Rosso Foco law Ferrari. So yeah. it's, yeah, like it, that car literally took three years just to spec. And, and all it was, was I was just, on my regular spot and I was like done for the day and I'm like getting ready to go home and boom like a 10 million dollar law Ferrari rolls and it's got FXXK wheels like yeah I never so it's not even about the cars it's about the possibilities that you could bring for yourself when you apply yourself and that's the the, the message I want to bring so like I mean now listen listen here's here's the next step for you I think okay okay if, if you allow me I Sure. So you're out there now. You're spotting these cars. You're doing something. You've already overcame huge hurdles. You've got out there. You're finding these incredible cars and everything else. Man, I would love seeing you. You're a nice guy, and your story. Thank you. Uh, that guy driving that that La Ferrari. No matter how much money in his is in his pocket, I would almost think if he's a halfway decent person, if he got a chance to meet you and and hear your story, right? And, and look, it doesn't matter that, you, that he's got five hundred million dollars, and you know you've got. 400 subscribers or whatever, right. you know, at this point, it doesn't matter. You've got, you got to start meeting some of these people, man, letting them know who you are. Right. You got to start networking with them, not just shooting their cars as they come around corners. You've got to start showing up where these guys hang out, man. You got to go there and show them what you're doing and, 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 and ask them for an interview and bring right. your, your GoPro with you and stand there and you know what? Tell them your story a little bit and hear their story. Hear out that what, how did they get the success and let them know how you're, fighting for your success and I think most good people are really really going to be inspired and impressed by what your story is and what you're doing so you're so right and like but in Toronto unfortunately like you like you know the weather it's so my main fear this year was what am I going to do during the winter because no videos can really kill a channel but just from one little like connection I made this this year like it like it yeah. blossomed, yeah, like... Um, yeah, that's it, man. You plant seeds. You're planting seeds. You're putting them out there. Flowers start to grow. They stem out. They start growing other things. You're just you're just getting started. So now you got that good connection. Go, go make a couple more of those connections. Right. Listen, you're in a part of the, of the world where 
when the the weather sucks for a lot of the year, but yeah. when it's beautiful outside, oh. you guys appreciate that beauty more than anything. Everybody's out and everybody's got their cars out. So you go out there and shoot like crazy when you can. Yeah. Make your connections with these other guys. Find out where the garages are. Find out where their man caves are. In the winter, go visit them there. <laughs> right. Release your footage slowly from all the cool stuff you shot when the weather was nice. And you're good, man. Yeah. That... People inspire people. You like, like you can do. You can naturally do that from just from what you're doing. But hang out with those. Don't hang out with those guys who are telling you you'll never get out of a wheelchair and you're never going to go. Oh, yeah. Places. Go hang out with that guy in, 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 those, in, those, in those cars. Those guys who... Who you know in most cases work really hard. Or oh yeah. Maybe some of them didn't have to work so hard. Maybe <laughs> we're we're lucky. You're right, um, right. But you know what? If they're willing to share with you what they got, I think they they're gonna benefit from you sharing with them. Oh yeah. You. That's why I like your channel so much. It, it like you make it about your viewers. Like so. Listen, man. Be unique. Yes. Be yourself. Be. Uh, uh, a lot of people told me, Steve, you gotta do it in English. You'd have a, you'd have a million subscribers already and everything else. Uh, maybe, I mean, but the truth is who else is speaking Japanese, doing stuff like I am in, in this world? There isn't anybody else. So, you know what? I mean, while I stroll along at 276,000 subscribers, wow. and I'm thankful for it. Um, you know, could I have had more? Yeah, but I, I, be, I'm i unique. There's nobody else. It's not like anybody's going to say, well, Steve's trying to copy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tell, who the hell is Steve trying to copy? Tell me. Get, no, me. not a single. I'm trying to copy. No, um, I can't not, even. And 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 there's not a whole lot of people who can copy exactly what I'm doing either. I mean, I have my unique set of things. I have my unique cars. I do oh. it in Japanese, just like you are unique. Right. Listen, a lot of people can go out there and shoot those cars coming around the corner on some of those streets, but that's why I'm saying you gotta you gotta involve yourself more more in in, in your videos. I think. So yeah. People get to know you, man. They they get because it's not at the end of the day, honestly, it's not while. We don't. I don't sit on my channel talk about me, me, me. It is called Steve's POV. Right. So I guess it is a little bit about me, but it, I always figured if there's things that I like and there's things that I'm into, then there's other people. But it's because you want it. Who are going to be into some of the stuff that I'm into too? And if I could motivate them, if I could share with them stuff that I like in a way that I enjoy it, I'm sure guys like you and, and people all around the world can hopefully in, enjoy the things that I'm into. Because I don't think I'm totally unique. But um, no, no, you're totally unique. Like. Sorry to interrupt, sorry, but you are, like, it's it's why I watch your channel, because you are unique, and I love that, like, I love a good, unique story, and you've got it down, and that's what the, the inspiration, I mean, like, Daily Driven Exotics, you, and, like, there's a few other channels, are unique, and that's, that's how you, that's what motivates, so, sorry, I interrupted, but, sorry, go on. No, no, that's that's really the point, man. I mean, just be unique. If you're trying to copy somebody else, it isn't going to go good. Be, no, be unique. Uh, you know, Damon, Damon and Dave are, are unique. They're not, you know, I mean, not, there's they're in a world where a lot of people do similar type things, but they're very unique and they're original. Damon's always thinking of new ideas and new ways to present things and new ways to sh shoot things and and that and that's you know that's that's incredible. You know, you, you yeah. watch how he does things, and, and it can it's very motivating to do more stuff yourself. Not copying, but you. I always say, it, right? I mean, look look at my Ferrari, right? Oh. You got a little bit of Liberty Walk. You have right. got a little bit of Moro Hoshi and that crew. You've got a little bit of all these elements of all these things, and then a little creativity from from myself, and a little bit of stuff from Bolsozo cars and Kaido right. racers, and 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 this unique style that kind of came together into one thing. I I didn't copy anybody. With no, I, I didn't. There's nothing on that car that's been copied many, but there's a lot of different things on that car that I've taken and inspired and kind of brought it together in my original way. Your your collection, like your four five eight, is like literally my favorite four five eight on the planet. Like those eight, like, but it wasn't just like, oh, I'm going to buy a four five eight. Oh, I'm just going to put exhaust on it. Oh, I'm just going to put Liberty Liberty Walk. Oh, I'm just going to throw a wrap. Like most people do. Like. No, that wrap absolutely 1 million percent turned out unreal. Like when I first saw it, I was just like, oh my God. And then the rims came together and the, the, like the lights and just like the exhaust, It that is such a unique 458. And it's just like the, my favorite on the planet. Like, Thank you. Yeah, and your R31, like I like that about you is like you put so much thought into your cars and 
it's not about like you can have people like um I don't know, like Stradman and have like nine different cars or people with like 50 cars and that's great but I think you're like me where it's quality over quantity you know what yeah. I mean like and it's not about how many it's about how sick and well done your cars are like so um, I can't remember though has your 458 been in Japan yet or is no. that or is that something you're planning and I can't talk about or? No, I can talk about it. I mean, I'd, I'd love to one day. I don't have any, any de definitive plans, but right. I think it would be pretty cool to get the 458 to Japan one day. Oh. I think that would be pretty pretty fun. That would be insane. And um, you had an SV in Japan, right? So that's my right. ultimate dream car, by the way. I, SVs, bar none, will always... I just It's my dream car. But sorry, uh, yeah, you had... So just to have an SV, how was that? Like, oh my God. That, that car was incredible. That car is no longer, uh, it's, it's, that car has been uh, been released. I don't I don't uh, have that car oh, okay. for right now, but that car was incredible. I mean, it, it, it was, you know, racing seats and, oh. and and just loud and star dropper exhaust. Oh my God. I mean, that car, that car was insane. People ask, because of, of my filming, they're like, what do you choose? What's your favorite car, Ferrari or Lamborghini? I'm like, there's no way I could choose, but I'll tell you this, Ferrari, so I was talking about this with the manager of Ferrari, I was like, Ferrari has the pedigree, the history behind it. If it wasn't yeah. for Ferrari, there wouldn't be Lamborghini, but from what Lamborghini did, cut like, is just unreal. And even now, even with them being a part of the Volkswagen group, like, it's still untouchable. So I, I always say, yeah, I, I have a Ferrari that I like and I have a Lamborghini that I like. Don't ever ask me to choose just one because you'll never get a straight answer out of me. Like, yeah. So, but for you, um, actually, I wanted to ask, what? how did you start your collection? Like, what was your very first, like, I know you've talked about it on the channel, but this is for my viewers and just like, you've had Ferraris before, your 458. Uh, so like, how did it start? Where did it grow from? Like, how did it grow? And like, what, and how, like, how did you get your R31? And that must have been an accomplishment in itself. Well, technically, uh, technically, not uh, not to uh, correct you, but I mean to correct you, that it's oh. not an R31. That's actually a K. That's actually a well, it's a 1971 Skyline, so it's a K. Mara, hang on a second. Hang on a second. Yeah, yeah. Um, that car is a. It's a 1971. It's considered a KGC 10. Oh, sorry. It's, um, it's it's before the R designation, so okay. It's a um, it's considered a, a Hakosta Sky uh, Nissan Skyline KGC 10 called a Hakosta. Okay. It's, it's nickname is Hako means square. Ska comes from the word skyline. Right. Okay. So square skyline. It's the first generation. So that, that car, um, I've always loved those cars ever since I went to Japan. Initially, I saw one for the first time. I thought oh. they were so beautiful. And when I lived in Japan in the 90s, I actually bought one and owned one. Um, but, you know, uh, business and money and everything else. Right. At the time, I had to sell it. Oh. And I always said I wanted another one. I wanted another one. And I moved back to the United States in 99 and, and uh, was here in California. And I just said, one day I'm going to get one of them again. And one day I'm going to get one again. And then... Uh, the opportunity arose uh, a few years, well, maybe five years ago, and I went to Japan, and I uh, rented a car, and I drove out to Nagoya, and I, and I went and saw this thing, and there's video of it on my channel, okay. that's uh, pretty funny, a uh, pretty fun story, and uh, I bought the car, and, and did <sighs> some work to it in Japan, and brought it back here to California. Wow, man, that's insane. Sorry, I, I keep calling it, because uh, my friend keeps designated it as an R31, and I'm like, no, it's not, but... It's not an R31. No, right, and it's before the R... Okay. It's the first generation Skyline. Right, so I, that's what I'm trying to... Yeah, that's what I think I keep getting confused with. Before the R's were... Right. Before there were any GTR or that type of R designation. Right. They were, it's just... It's, it's it's called a Hakoska. Hakoska. Okay, ha Hakoska. Oh, Hakoska, I, right. Okay. Uh, Americans or Canadians may say Hakosuka. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's so which, funny. Uh, yeah, which is one different way to, to which is how it's pronounced, but uh, it's pr properly pronounced Hakosta. Hey, I don't mean to push it, but I, yeah. I only got a, a few minutes, so give me whatever other questions you want me to answer real quick, because I'm going to have to get going soon. I apologize. Um, No, uh, everything we've talked about is fine. I, um, No, everything's great, man. Thank you so much for doing this. Like, I, I don't know how to, th like, I'm literally speechless. I'm, I don't know how to thank you enough to 
Like it just, you, I'm, my mind's blown right now. Me, you thank me plenty. I'm, I'm thankful that if I'm able to help you and your channel and support you, and you've been so supportive of me too. So I just want to tell everybody that you're. You're a nice guy, man, and they should subscribe to On The Spot, The Exotics, and follow you on Instagram oh for my. cool updates. And um, that's it, man. I wish you lots of, lots of success with your channel. Thank you. And with, um, you know, getting stronger every day and overcoming your disability, and not, or at least not letting you let, hold you back. And that's, that's inspirational, I think, for a lot of people, including myself. And honestly, I continue to tell your story and do what <sighs> you're doing because I think you'll inspire people who have... 500,000 and 5 million subscribers oh my God. with what you're doing. So keep it up, man. Thank Thumbs you so up. much. I hope you keep in touch. Thumbs up, brother. Thank you so, so much. You got it, man. Look forward to the video and uh, good luck. Stay warm up there. Thank you. Yeah, I'll release it Saturday. Cool, cool. Can't wait to see it. Okay, man. Thank you. Thumbs up. We'll see you. Okay. Bye-bye.